sure you enjoy the prayer, the confession, and the worship. We've been talking about how to find and keep through love. And last, some, in the past editions, I told you that how to is the key to life. Whatever you don't know how to is superior to you. But interestingly, the word ignorant is from the word ignore. Did you hear me say that? Ignorant is from the word ignore. It is ignorant. So you start to rant because you ignore information. Information is everywhere. Somebody says, I don't even know how my marriage will work. You can't. My YouTube page, my Instagram page, Facebook page, and some other people is full of information and wisdom to make your marriage work. So if your marriage is not working, it's not because um, there are no information. It's because you ignore the information or you are ranting. Ignore rant <laughs> so we started talking that auto is important it does not matter um the way you think it should be done you need to find out it must be done like i said the other time somebody wrote three names stella um you know um Sube and um um, Sister Clara and say, God, the one I pick is the one in the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel the anointing. Yeah. Ah, Sube, sorry, Lord, one more chance. No. If you pick a wife by lottery, you will lose her also by lottery. You need to know how to. Then how to find. So you have to find. It is you that must find. Proverbs 18, 22. He will find a wife, find a good thing, and obtain the favor of the Lord. You've got to find. So finding is yours. God will not drop on your lap and then... Um, a wife will not be deposited to you by Amazon.com or, or Kijiji or um, whatever, you know. You've got to find. You mean I can do that? You've got to go and find. You see, then keep. We talked about keep because your life is not made by what you find. Your mind is made by what you keep. Your mind, your life is not, your, your prosperity does not come from your income. It comes not only from what comes in, it comes from what you keep at the end of the day. So I'm trying to say how to find and keep through love. So the true love still exists. Proverbs 18.22, the amplified version. It says, who, he who finds a true wife, finds a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. So there's something called a true wife. So not just anyone, somebody that finds anyone. No, not anyone. It must be a true wife, a true love. And then we establish that there are three things that are very important. Number one, you must know what you're looking for. No matter what you want in this world, you need to know what you're looking for. If you don't know what you're looking for, you will be in trouble. You must know what you're looking for. Number two, you must know the right place to look. Because you see, you can't be looking for a car in a dryer. You can't be looking um, for some things in some other places, you know. So you got to know where to look. Not only must you know what you're looking for. You need to know where to look. There, you need to have the purchasing power. Because I've seen people say, "I have my spec." It's not my spec. But are you the spec of your spec? Ooh, somebody needs to type that. Are you the spec of your spec? Do you meet the requirement of the requirement? Because when all is said and done, you will eventually get attracted to somebody like you. So one of the ways to know what your life looks like is what have you been attracting lately? Because Proverbs chapter 29 verse 17 says that. He said, just like a mirror reflects the face of a man. The, the Living Bible translation, Proverbs 27 19. Just like the mirror reflects the face of a man. That is how the kind of friends he keeps show we is. So, the people you attract is a proof of the kind of person you are. So, I'm not saying you can say, okay, I want to marry, um, I want to marry a king. I'm saying become a queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Become the person that you desire, we desire. How oh, that's so complex. Become the person that you desire, will desire. Let me let me put it like this. Let me put it like this. Um, you need to understand that there are specs in life. Let, let me. Let, I was talking to my daughters. I have two wonderful daughters. I mean, twenty-one and um, nineteen. So I was talking to them about my spec for them as a. Husband, should, should I show you the spec? Should I show you the spec? I'll show you the spec right now. If you're a married man, you're listening to me. This is your spec. This is what you should be. Even if you are not it yet, 
move towards it. If you're a single guy, now you know this is the mirror. This is what you should be like. This is the prototype. I'm going to talk to the ladies too, but let me start with you men. My prototype of a good man is a guy called DJ. You know DJ? No, not disco jockey. No, 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 that's a joker. DJ for David Jesse. David, the son of Jesse. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 18, the amplified version, I love the way Jesse, David Jesse, DJ, was introduced. You know, it was one man that was talking to the king. He said, one of the young man said, I've seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. He, he plays skillfully, he's a valiant man, he's a man of war, he's prudent in speech and eloquent. He's an attractive person and the Lord is with him. Him. Yay! That's balanced diet. <laughs> Let me take that one by one. He said, I found the son of Jesse. We know his root, the Bethlehemite. We know where he came from. We know who to talk to if there is a problem. He didn't draw from the sky. He didn't say, I came from London. I'm relocating to America. Give me an answer in two days or else, or else. No, if we know his family. He's from Jesse. We know his tribe. He's a Bethlehemite. He's a Christian. He's a believer. Somebody we can draw. Then he plays carefully. He's also a valiant man. He's a man of war. He can go and fight for his nation. But he's prudent in speech. He does not speak any owl. He's also a man of uh, an eloquent. He could speak well. Not only that, he's an attractive person and the Lord is with him. In fact, I prefer the way message translation described me. Message translation of 1 Samuel 16, 18. Look at what he says. One of the young men spoke up and you know what I've discovered? People know people like that. Young men know people. Because that's who they're meant to be like. Don't envy people like that. Learn from people like that. Yeah, a lot of you are envying people you should be learning from. I think that's a wisdom point you need to put down here. Somebody should type that. Don't envy who you should, you should be learning from. Or else you'll be leaning your destiny. So, he said, one of the young men spoke up. I know someone. I've seen it myself. The son of Jesse of Bethlehem. We know his antecedent. We know his pattern. Not just his potential. He's an excellent musician. So in his career, he's doing well. He's also courageous. He's of age. He's matured. He's well spoken. He will not verbally abuse you. And he's also good looking. And God is with him. You see, that last phrase, God is with him, kill it for me. He must be somebody that God is with. What a great description. So somebody said, okay, Reverend, so you're giving prototype to the guys, so, so to, the, to, the, to, the, to the of the guys, all of the ladies. I'm going to tell you guys the kind of a lady you must be looking for. This is a prototype. If I'm a lady now looking for a husband, that for some else is in 18, I'm going to copy it and paste it on my wall. If I'm a guy, I'm going to show you Ruth chapter 3 right now. I'm going to copy it and paste it on my wall. So every morning I'm trying to get dressed, I will look at it and say, that's my future wife. That's my future husband. So let me show you who your future wife is. And if you're a wife already, this is who you should be like. If you're a girl aspiring to marry, this is what you should aspire to become. So it, it works for everybody. All of us have something to learn. In Ruth chapter 3 and verse 10, um, Ruth said to Boaz, I'm surprised that you even know me. You are the richest man in town. You are the Jeff Boss of uh, the, your days. You are the 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 richest man anywhere the rocky fella how come you know a small girl like me and he replied and said bless me you my daughter for you have shown more kindness in your latter than your beginning in so much that you do not follow young men either poor or rich i know by reputation people have told me you don't go after men you are not an aristo mm -mm. you don't beshe if you don't know the meaning of that, pray in tongues. You get interpretation. And he said, he was, let me say, and fear not, my daughter, I will do unto you as a request, because all the city of my people know you are a virtuous woman. Oh, my God. What do your city know about you? Okay, your city is too big. What does your street know about you? Okay, your street, they, they, they don't like you. What of your house? See the way the message translation put out. He said, now, my daughter, don't worry about anything. I'll do all that you could want to ask. Everybody in town knows you are a courageous woman. You are a real prize. Are you a prize or a punishment? Yeah. Some marry prize, some marry punishment. <laughs> so he said, you are a real prize. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. So 
we have talked about who to find, who can find, very powerful. We said he must be a man, not a boy. Proverbs 18, 22, he will find a true wife. So it's not money that makes you a wife. You become a wife, then you are found. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, we saw it, verse 22, he said, he said, for this question, the man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. So he's a man, he must be mature. We talked about that last week, so I'm not going to go over that again. Genesis 2, 24, the second in the English version said, that's why a man will leave his own mother and father and marry a woman the two of them will become like one person today i want to talk about when to find when to find when is very important because when you if you don't get the way right everything will look wrong if you don't get the way right everything will look long, wrong in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 10 the bible talks about time and time and time but i love the verse 11 he said god makes things beautiful when the timing is right Woo! god makes things beautiful when the timing is right you know what i've discovered in on my about um, almost five decades of being on earth and about three decades of being a pastor have discovered that sometimes the person is right but the timing is wrong it will now look as if the person is wrong and sometimes you can't even get the right person when the timing is wrong so you've got to get your timing right make sure you get your timing right if you rush into it you will rush out of it and most of the time rushing out is difficult like i said what divorce is from the latin word two for die force force for by for by force so divorce is moving apart by force it's not that easy don't rush in because to rush out becomes very very difficult you need to get your timing right one of the things i say to people for example is that if you're not ready to be married in three years don't even go into a, a relationship yeah yeah you know, some of you men, you have become the lord of the ring. <laughs> you gave a ring eight years ago. The ring is still there. The Bible said, even if it is slavery, after seven years, let her go. Bro, brother, Zerubbabel, slavery that you bought with your money. After seven years, release her. But you, you've, you've kept her in bondage with the ring. The ring has become a shackle. Eh? Lords of the ring. If you are not ready, you see, I believe that proposing to somebody is like the bus, the last bus stop before the bus stop of marriage. So if you are not going into marriage in the next three years, don't enter the bus now. Timing is right. You've got to get that right. It's very, very important. So I'm going to tell you five. So I've talked about who can find. I'm talking about when to find now. But what I'd rather teach is when not to find. Because sometimes when not helps us to understand when to. So I'm going to teach you five times when not to. Fine. If we don't f finish it today, I think we we'll agree. I must make sure we finish it today. Because next week I want to now talk about uh, where to find. You need to know where to locate. If I'm going to give you the GPS address of where to find, I'm sure you love me to do that. I'm sure you but married people, you would love to know that so you can teach your children. Very important. So let's talk about when not to find. Number one, don't find if you are not matured enough. Don't find if you are not matured enough. Remember Matthew 19, 11, the message translation. This is Jesus speaking. This is not Dr. Albert speaking. This is not your mom, your dad speaking. This is not your pastor speaking. This is Jesus speaking. He said, not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. Jesus said that so if you are not matured enough don't think about it if you are not matured physically if you are not matured materially if you are not matured financially if you are not matured emotionally yeah 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 it takes a lot to be married it takes one of the greatest problem of marriage in the world is that it's full of immature people and jesus said that two thousand years plus ago not everyone is matured enough to live a married life it requires certain aptitude and grace marriage is not for everyone matthew 19 11 message translation right from the mouth of jesus I couldn't have put it better. Are you matured enough? I put something on my Instagram page. If you're not following me on Instagram, you are missing a lot. I have over, well over 20,000 people following me. I do Love Clinic every Friday between 8 and 9 p.m. And people from all over, and I mean all over, from Asia, from North America, from Africa, from Europe, just bombard that place to listen to what I've got to say about love. So I, 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 I said something very, very important. You know, marriage is not for everyone. 
marriage is not for everybody. Don't rush it if you are not matured enough to make it work right from the mouth of Jesus. So are you matured enough? That is very... So I put something on my Instagram page about a man that says, his 17-year-old daughter said he has a boo. So if I slap you, you will quickly put K <laughs> in front of the boo to make it book. <laughs> you don't need a boo. You need a book. Are you matured enough? Are you are you financially, are you emotionally matured enough? Are you physically matured enough? Right now, it's a crime in our country when a young teenager is given to a man to marry because their body structure can't even take it. It leads to a lot of complications. So, number one person not to find, don't find if you're not matured enough. Number two, don't find when you're in transition. Yes. Don't find when you... A lot of people make that mistake. You just graduated from school, from um, Unilag. Then they send you to Jigawa, NYC. You are missing your parents. You are missing your friend. Then one guy starts to walk around you with his um, boxers showing. Dirty boxers for that matter. Some of it torn. <laughs> Working as if he has permanent deformity. Then he said, Abby girl, how are you? You know I love you so much. Ah, your head turn is the wrong time. Don't do it when you are in transition. Transition time is not a time to make life-defining decisions. And there are only one decision greater than who to marry, and that is who you make your master and lord, which is your salvation. The next most important thing is who to marry. You don't make that in transition period. You see, even God had to suspend his plan waiting for a perfect time yeah 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 genesis 2 5 god the bible said every plant of the field that was on that and every above the field before it grew god had not make rain to fall because there was no man to till the ground i'm telling you genesis 2 5 so god has a plan i want the ground to be tilled by man but rain has not fallen let me hold on so yeah you plan to marry but rain has not fallen you are still in transition. You've not gotten yourself right emotionally. Don't make that move. Don't. One of the, in, in counseling people that relocate, especially girls, that is one of their major mistakes. They get to London, they get to Canada, they get to US. They're lonely, they're missing family, they're in transition. A guy comes into their lives and let me show you around. Let me help you settle down. Boom, problem started. I've seen that with people that go to university. You left home for the first time. You get to university. In those days when we were in school, they used to call it October Rush. <laughs> and the older guys start to prey on the younger guy because they know that they're in transition. They are not emotionally balanced. So when you're in transition, it's not a good time to make such a decision as who to marry. Let me show you Proverbs chapter 24, verse 27, the amplified version of Proverbs 24 to 27. It says, put first things first. It's amazing that I'm not the one that said that. It was Solomon the king with 700 wives, 300 concubines. Wow, the guy is a dawn. <laughs> See what he said. He said, put first things first. Prepare your work outside. Get it ready for yourself in the field. Afterward, you build your house, you establish a home. Whoa. That is eating below the belt. First things first, prepare your work outside, get yourself a certificate, get yourself a job, get yourself a career, get ready for yourself in the field, make a name in the field. That is after then you can now say, I'm getting a house and I'm building a home. So number one, I said, don't do it when you are not matured enough. Jesus said, not everyone is matured enough to live a married life. Not everyone. Number two, when in transition, when you are just moving cities, moving jobs, moving home, you are vulnerable. People want to prey on you. That is why all the boys in the university do October rush because they know you. you the young girls are not smart. They're just coming in. They're just thinking of what to do. So when you are in transition, Transition. When you're in transition, don't make that kind of a decision. It's very, very tough decision to make. And most of the time, it will lead to a downfall. So I'm trying to say to you, be careful the kind of decision you make in transition. You see, when you're driving a bike 
transition points are always the most vulnerable. That's where the bulk of the accidents happen. Transition point. So transition point is not the time for you to make up your mind on who to marry. I'm saying it over and over again because in my years of counseling, I've seen it over and over. People say, well, when I go to Kano to serve and they put, put me somewhere in prayer, place of my primary assignment, that's how I made this guy. It's not a good time. I'm not saying push them away. I'm saying give them a gap. Don't make the decision then. Take your time. Transition time is vulnerable time. All right. So number three, when going through a heartbreak, yes, you don't heal heartbreak with heartbreak. You deepen the wound. Can I say that again? You don't heal heartbreak with heartbreak. You deepen the wound. A lot of time, people are rebound. You know, um, um, Isaac just um, disappointed them. Then they're looking for Noah. No, it does not work like that. I know heartbreak will be very painful. I know when you're going through heartbreak, you need medication and you will think that another relationship will make it better. Especially this generation of pay, pay them gang. Yeah, I know you guys. <laughs> so you want to quickly say, eh, Kunle, hmm. you see, there's this guy I know that has been talking to me, Sylvester. He has, he has six packs and, and he's very handsome and he, He's tall like Pastor Peter and very light in complexion, like a, like 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 yellow popo. <clears throat> I will now get into relationship with him. Post it on Instagram. Pepe them. No, you are preparing your destiny. When you just went through an outbreak, is not the time. You see, the good news is that though doctors and cannot heal outbreak, I've not seen um, a medicine on the shelf before that is on it. Outbreak pills. Two three times daily. I don't know if you have seen. I've never seen. I've never seen a plaster or a bandage that they put for at ache. No. But you see, Psalm 147 verse 3, Psalm 147 verse 3, especially the amplified version, he said, God heals the broken hearted and binds their wounds. He cured their pains and their sorrows. He, he, you see, I love that. So it's only God that can heal. Let him heal. Let him bind your wound. Let him put plaster on the wound. Let the wound heal. But I must tell you sincerely, wound healing takes time. Oh, yeah. You know, I had an injury some years ago and um, it was very bad. Very bad. So bad that they were even thinking of cutting the leg. I'm, I'm telling you. And um, invariably, I mean, God worked the miracle, but it still took time for it to heal. And if you know how mobile I am, it was crazy. And they told me, they said, Reverend, you can't do what you do normally with this leg for now. Let it heal. Ah, eh, my son, to give my kids 48 in Lagos. I'm the one that fixed the time. Everybody will be expecting me. I'm preaching for this. This is Pastor Kislo Congo. I'm preaching for Pastor Germanu for. I have to be in South Africa. I need to be in UK. It takes time for wound to heal. So, you cannot use Brother Zerubbabel mm, to medicate the wound caused by Brother Aristophilus. No, you need time to heal. Look at what I'm about to say next. It's very powerful. If you don't heal from who cut you, you will bleed on people that did not cut you. If you don't heal, from those that caught you, you will not bleed on people that didn't caught you. You will make Paul suffer for the offense of Peter. Don't do it. When you just came out of an eye break, don't do it. In fact, Proverbs 4.23, the message translation said, keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. That's where your life stands. In fact, the living Bible says, above all else, guide your affections. For they influence everything else in your life. Above all else, guide your affection. So you're coming out of an outbreak. Guide your affection. It's very important. Guide it. Put a garrison around it. Amplified says, number four, don't find when pressure. Listen to this wisdom key. A decision made under pressure will make your destiny to be punctured. A decision made under pressure will make your destiny to be pressured. Your parents can be pressuring you. Your 
bad stuff can be pressuring you. Your friends can be pressuring you. Because I had a friend telling his classmate, say, so you're going to leave this university with only a certificate. Shame on you. You're leaving with only a certificate, not a bay, not a boo. Don't listen to them. You can't afford to make life decisions because of prayer. Your, your parents pray your notwithstanding. Proverbs 19.14. Proverbs 19.14. It says, house and riches are in the inheritance of others. He said, they are, when it comes to house and rich, you know, fathers, but a prudent wife comes only from God. Father, your father can give you a good wife, can give you a good husband, your mom can give you. Don't let their pressure make your destiny to punch you. When you be in the heat of the problem, they will have grown old and died. So you won't even get their shoulder to cry on. Don't make the decision who to marry when you are under prayer. Your prayers come. Big prayers come from all sorts of people and places. Especially this, you know, in our days, you know, you got married, okay, you send the invitation, now some got it, some didn't get it. In these days, by the time Instagram we carry it, Facebook we carry it, wedding Niger, wedding Ibado, uh, glamorous weddings. So the pressure comes. But you see, pressure as a way of not making you to think right. In fact, when you have a prayer in your brain, then we have to drill it for some of the prayer to come out. Oh, hell, that's what I'm talking about. Don't make, that is not when to find. Not when you are under pressure. It might be parental, it might be pastoral, it might be peers. There are several kinds of prayer. But sometimes, the worst kind of prayer is one that is not coming from parents or pastors or peers. It's the one coming from you mm. you you know one lady told me said i'm so pressured she said when i leave my house i even notice that dogs walk in twos and cats in twos and chickens in twos and me alone Abba. don't put yourself on that prayer number three don't choose when you are bitter that is not when to find when you are bitter eee, you are bitter some people are bitter against women uh, have you have you read people that says men has come and you are 29 and a half 29 one quarter years old looking for a man you are still bitter against the whole of the man race <coughs> you are too bitter against all women all, all women are the same it is the one you are attracting because of your bitterness look at what jesus said just when he said whosoever sin you release you release Whosoever sin you retain, you retain. Yeah, that's what Jesus said. Hmm. That's profound. Because if you retain the sin, you will reproduce the sin. If what I'm just I've just said now is all you got from this message, you've gotten something mighty. Whosoever sin you retain, you retain, Jesus said. Whosoever sin you release, you release. But listen, the one you retain, you reproduce. Have you seen girls that ate their father? The girls hated their mother for being promiscuous. Hated their mom. But you know what? They are promiscuous now. They retain this thing. They reproduce it. Have you seen guys that hated their dad for not being responsible? For sleeping around? Does it not shock you that they are doing the same now? Because when you retain this sin, that is why forgiveness makes your future possible. Forgiveness is not an option. Forgiveness is compulsory cause in life. Because you release them, not because of them, but because of you. You know what I've discovered? Unforgiveness is you taking poison. And thinking your enemy will die. <laughs> I've taken this now. Yes, they will soon die. They won't die. Because you are the one that took the poison. So don't do it when you are bitter. You know Proverbs chapter 30, from verse 21, Proverbs 30. Solomon said in the Liverable Translation, there are three things that make the art to quick, at quick. Three things. Number three, he mentioned, is a bitter woman when she finally married. Mm. Her husband will take, pardon my grammar, the in-laws, they will take. All the single girls, they will take. She will show them. You are not showing nobody. Mm -mm. You will just be shown down in pain. You won't show nobody. So I'm trying to say to you, it is not a good time when you are bitter. Get out of bitterness first before you eventually say it's time to marry. Oh my word, the time goes so fast when we get on this program. So I've said five, ten times when not to find. Don't find when you're not matured enough. Marriage is for matured people. In 
Matthew 19, 11, Jesus Christ said in the message translation, not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. It requires certain aptitude and grace. Marriage is not for everyone. So if you are not mature, don't do it. Number two, don't do it when you are in transition. Transition time is vulnerable time. Proverbs 24, 27, preferred version, it says, put forth things first. He said, get your, prepare your work. Don't do it during transition. Transition time is vulnerable. Transition time is where most accidents happen. Number three, we said, don't do it when you are going through outbreak. Make sure you heal first. Because if you don't eat from where you cut you, you will bleed on people that did not cut you, and that is not fear. Number four, we say don't do it when you are under pressure, either parental or pastoral or peer or personal. Those are the four kind of prayer when marriage is concerned. Personal, the one you put yourself under because you're watching Wedding Nigeria and then Wedding Bella and all these things. Then we said finally, don't do it when you are bitter. Because Solomon the wise said in Proverbs 30 from verse 21 that the heart will quake when a bitter woman finally married. Don't go yet. I want to pray for you. You know this one thing. But Jesus Christ said in Matthew 19, 11, he said it takes aptitude and grace. So we've received aptitude. I want to pray for you. Don't go. I'll be back.